I'm Doth Savick, and this is the DG Cooler Bag. This bag has a retail price of $93.95 and a list price of $73.95. You can purchase it at dgcoolerbag.com. Full disclosure at the beginning, as I always do, this bag I received for $0. I didn't pay for it. I got it in trade for you know doing a full test and review for the bag. I feel like this bag is a jack of all trades and perhaps a master of none. For the $74, you get a bag that is extremely versatile. You can set this thing up in many different ways. And I, I love the old school vibe that it has with uh, the backpack straps on here. Also, you can choose to go with a, a single strap if you prefer that. It does ship with the bag. I imagine most people that get this are probably gonna put the backpack straps on right away. These straps are very lightly padded. There's not, there's not a whole lot of padding in there. You can see how they will twist right up for me. I don't think that it, 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 at first, that did bug me when I felt how lightweight the straps were. I know that you know some of the other quad straps out, out there have you know gel padding in them or uh, you know just th thicker foam even, and I think that is one of the corners that needed to be cut to keep this at the price point and give all of the other options that it has. This d this didn't bug me. I didn't feel fatigue carrying this around, even when I had it fully loaded with ice packs and a bunch of you know cans and water water bottles all that stuff so it, it is you know thin pads on those straps but again I don't feel like that really you know caused me caused me shoulder stress on the lower section of those straps there is some you know kind of a, mo a molly setup so if you if you did wish you could Add a sternum strap there, or you know, hang hang some stuff off of off of those points if you if you'd like. One thing that is pretty unique about these straps is how much webbing they have for adjustment. You can see I've left a pretty long tail there to show you. If once you figure out how you want to carry this and you've moved these buckles around uh, and figured out what you want your maximum adjustment to be, I would probably go ahead and cut that remaining tail off. If you're not familiar with how to do that properly, I'm sure you, sure you can do a quick search. You know, if, if you don't cut it, you may end up with some fuzzy stuff like I've got hanging off here if you don't cut it properly. Um, once you do cut it, you need to melt those so that, so that they'll stick. And I, I've left them long just so you can see all of the adjustment that is available. You, and that's that's the lower connecting point of the strap. The upper connecting point of the strap, you you also have a ton of webbing adjustment. Uh, I've got this buckle lifted all the way, but you can see I can go twice that far if I if I really wanted to make those straps uh, super long. So you've got ton ton of room for adjustment there. Let's get straight into the guts of this. I've got the lid zipped closed. And there, there's my current setup on it. I've got the cooler stacked in the middle, and I've got 10 discs in here. Uh, over here, I've got five putters and mids, plus you know putter, putting putter here, and then over here, I've got four drivers. And there's all sorts of different ways that you can lay this out. The cooler does fit really nicely in the middle, and if you're gonna weigh the cooler down and have a, a bunch of beverages or ice or whatever, it probably does make sense to keep that in the middle, but you certainly don't have to leave it there. What I've got in the cooler right now is a six pack with a one pound Yeti uh, ice block at the bottom, and it is just fits like a glove. That ice pack fits in there so perfectly. It, it's just a no-brainer. It makes total sense to me. If you if you don't want to have an ice pack in there, then your 12 ounce can sit a whole lot lower. 
that gives you room to, you know, you could drop loose ice on top of them. Uh, you can stack another row like that for a total of nine cans in there. You can put tall cans in there, 16 ounces if you want, or, you know, drop snacks or something on top. I really like just, you know, putting, putting six cans and an ice pack. It's just, just a perf perfect fit, as you can see. Or, I said one pound, I think. This is a two pound uh, Yeti. The other way that I've used this, this cooler cartridge is just for, for bulk storage. You know, I, there are two beverage holders on this bag, so you can still carry, you know, like I've got a 32 ounce Nalgene out here. If you're running, you know, two Nalgenes or Hydro Flasks or whatever, that's probably all the liquids that you need. And then you can use this for, for bulk storage. Like I've put towels in here, I've put a hoodie in there, you could run a camera, like there's, you know, realizing that even though this works great as a cooler, that's not the only thing it can be used for. Really changed how versatile this bag is. Being able to use that thing for bulk, bulk storage is, is pretty huge. And then of course if we pull it out, we can throw more discs in there. So I had 10 with the cooler in the middle and there is sliding 11, uh, 11 drivers straight in. So I've got a 21 disc set up now and room, you know, room to spare. I could easily fit another disc or two in there. If I pull dividers, then maybe three more. So I can run, a, you know, a serious heavy disc setup if I want. When you get this bag, it comes disassembled and collapsed. Here's our, our disc divider setup. We've got two dividers in there we can move around. And then in the bottom of the bag, there is a, a stiff panel that, that folds up. With that up, I'm able to just collapse the bag and fold it up, and that's how it comes when it's in a box. So as you unbox this, you need to fold that panel down. and then get to building this disc divider, depending on how you want to set the bag up. Now, this, this is how I had it in there, and you can see that I have pushed this as far as it will go over on the Velcro, and that's to match the width of the cooler. You know, you wanna put one divider in first, set the cooler next to it, and then you can see how to stack the other divider in there. I can move them this way if I wanted. I could make them more dead centered. Uh, for, for this setup, you know, I had uh, fewer drivers on this side, and then I wanted more room for my mids and putters, and that's, that's why I did it that way. Another thing to consider, is that inside the bag, there is a zippered compartment over here. It's kind of a, a little secret stash. And if you, if you do want to utilize that stash, you may want to set this up differently. Instead of having drivers over here or discs that when you pull them in and out, they might rub against the stuff you have in the stash, you can pull this divider over and then set the cooler on that side and then, and then run full discs across the other way. That way you've got the soft padded side of the cooler pressed up against whatever valuables you may have in that side pocket. One of the things that first caught my eye when I was loading this bag up and using it is how the divider sticks up high on the front. It sticks up higher than the zipper. That's I have that a little bit exaggerated right now uh, because of how I've just dropped it in there. Once this thing kind of has the chance to settle, you can you can pull it up, but then still it starts sagging back down, especially when you're interacting with that with that putter pocket. And like just aesthetically, that bugs me a little bit. It of course doesn't affect like use of the the main area to have that sit high. I think you know part of what's going on is just how how soft this this front panel is, and and that 
combined with the wider footprint, deeper footprint of that of that disc divider, leaves the the outer shell just like slinking down a little bit. So you know, another one of the orientations that I tried this bag in was pulling the U channel out completely, not running any dividers, uh, not running the stiff panels. And it worked just fine. In fact, I think it was more comfortable on my back that way. It, it let the ba bag bend more around me, and it makes it even lighter. With the, you know, the cooler in there, the backpack straps on it, and the disc divider in, and then everything else gutted, you know, no items in the bag, this thing comes in at 1.3 kilos. So it's it's light anyways, but if you if you do pull this and run it naked, it, it is even lighter. One of the things that I thought that was going to cause me an issue with uh, by, by running it without the disc divider in there at all was that I would be ha having more issues getting my putting putter in and out. This, this elastic here is, even though it has a lot of play, it is very taut. So it, uh, this uh, Ponderosa is like pretty tacky. This is kind of, you know, pencil eraser s sort of... Uh, rubbery and you can see it doesn't want to just you know push all the way in I, I kind of need a, a second hand here to grab and get it in now that's great it's captured super well it was even harder to manipulate that when I first got this I finally took a couple uh, really stiff putters and I actually just stacked I stacked mul multiple discs in there to really start stretching it, and I left them for a couple of days, and and that did help. It is now easier, you know, for for me to work with this. And if I get a, like this is a super thick madrone, it is easier for me to get that in because it's a it's a slick disc. I can do, you know, I'm kind of hinging it on one point and rotating in on the other, and that makes it a little bit easier for, for me to work with. But if you've got, you know, really tacky uh, feeling, sticky sticky putters, then you're going to have more issues getting that in and out. You may want to try the same trick I did, stack a couple in there and get that stretched. We really do have the same thing going on with the mini marker spot. You can see the fabric bunch there. It, it's it's really tight, which again, like you don't have to worry about losing your mini, that's for sure. But it also may have you using both hands uh, to really interact with that. We've got a little pencil pocket right next to that, and I've got you know two pencils in there. They fit fine, no problem. On the outer storage, we've got a couple of tabs here. I've just put a little carabiner through that one to show you know if you want to hang a couple of bag tags you've got a sweet little spot to do it there of course you can do it on the uh, kind of daisy chain molly style webbing on the lower end of the backpack straps but that's going to be hitting the ground when you set them down this will give you the opportunity to hang stuff a little bit higher up another thing when we're deciding what to do with the top flap of the bag, we've got a couple options. You know, these are, it's really common to roll these things up and strap them in. That's what this buckle here is for. And then on the inside, we've got our little, our little Velcro. So we can roll and capture and we're in there. On some style bags like this that I've carried, the Velcro piece, they will have laying here on the outside, and then this uh, section where you loop the Velcro through is mounted on the inside. This is like this is so huge that they've done it this way. You really do not want the Velcro hanging out here. It's just going to be sticking to your shirt, your pants. Like try, you know, if you're wearing microfiber or something, it's going to be pilling and just pulling that stuff apart. And you know, you'll feel it crunching on your back. It is so nice. The you know the littlest thing that they've put the Velcro on the inside. What I prefer, rather than rolling it up as you just saw, is to actually take the top flap and just tuck it. All the way down. You don't have, you know, those tall loops, you know, poking off the side then. This 
bothers me none at all. I don't feel that on my back. It just gives a much cleaner look overall to the bag to have that tucked all the way all the way down and I've been doing that. that that's how I've been using it whether I've got the full disc divider cartridge in or whether I'm carrying the bag uh, naked and just packed full of discs and whatnot uh, that that I always have pushed down the way that I have this set up overall uh, currently I've got a towel pushed in this beverage holder and then a hockey puck at the bottom throwing in into trees, knocking discs out. It's perfect for that. And then we have uh, a really nice, just simple storage pocket on the side here. I like that we've got double zippers so we can choose exactly how much of that we want to have open. You know, for example, I've got my cell phone in there. I don't need to op open this all the way and have it, you know, so that something might be able to fall out. Uh, I can leave it just open a little bit across the top. There's room for so much more stuff in here rather than a cell phone. Like if I, if I wanted, I could easily jam an oversized towel in there and still have room for more stuff. You can see that's, you know, halfway uh, filling that pocket up. I think if I'm running, you know, when I'm carrying a cooler full of beverages, I'm not using both of my drink holders, for, you know, for the most part, and, and that's why I carry a towel or drop something else over there. Uh, if I'm not carrying my cooler full of beverages, then I'm probably using that for a hoodie or towels or other things, and, and then I might have beverages on, on both sides. So, like, the options are just crazy. You can do so many different things with this bag. On this side, I've got keys, and I've got my wallet in there, and then I've got my pouch with dog poop bags, dog tags, cash, every, every all the other little things you might need out on the course. On the bottom of the bag, we've got six little half dome plastic feet. You can see that on the bottom of the beverage holders, it's mesh. It looks like I got a bottle cap in there I forgot about. Uh, you know, if, if I'm throwing bottle caps or empty cans or bottles or whatever in there, I really don't have to worry about them draining. They'll come out through that mesh just fine. And that's pretty much it. Imagine the possibilities, right? How many different ways could you set this thing up? You've got the backpack strap option, you've got the single strap option, you've got cooler in the middle, cooler on the side, no cooler, uh, you've got no divider, you know, if you wanna pull those out as well. I think it's really cool how they've set this up so that you have so many different options. Um, I've said that, I don't know, five or six times now or something, but the, like you get the point, you get the point. That is one of the things that I think brings the most value to this bag. There are some other things, you know, that, that do bug me about it. That this is, this is paramount. I think that if, if I was really committing to this bag, I would figure out a way to resolve this. And what I would probably be looking at doing is pulling that zipper high enough uh, and then s doing a little bit of sewing through there by hand to just hold it in place. If I did a couple points across there, I think that would do a couple things. One, aesthetically, it would you know stop bugging me as much, but then it would it would probably also make this easier to interact with if this if this front panel is so t tight like that. That's like the number one thing I would recommend for a change. Like if there was to be a change on this bag, it would be potentially to figure out how to, you know, maybe put a, a double wall here. So there's a panel on the inside, add a zipper, and then just toss a stiffener panel in inside the front. That way, even if you were decided to run without the dividers, you pull those all the way out, you'd, you'd still have a little bit cleaner, you know, look across the front and a little bit easier to interact with your, with your putter here but it's a small nitpicky thing I, th I think that this is a good value you get so many different options for the $74 or whatnot it, you know it doesn't have the best backpack straps on it and you know clearly you don't have the perfect finish all the way around on the front but those are the kind of trade-offs you have to make if you're gonna get a you know a $74 bag that can be converted so many ways I think this really does a good job of 
crossing over between a totally casual player, like I have it set up here, you know, 10 discs, all the drinks you could want to carry, but then it can really also be used for, uh, you know, a total enthusiast for a tournament round. You pull the cooler out of there and run discs all the way across and still have enough storage for everything you'd need for, uh, for a tournament. So I, I think it's, it's really unique in that way, and that's what makes this bag shine the most. I appreciate you guys hanging out and watching through to the end of my review today. I do hope I've answered every question you could have about this bag. If there, you feel there's something I've missed or you got any comments, just type them down below. I'm pretty quick to get back to those. And of course, thanks DG Cooler Bag for sending this over for my review. I've enjoyed carrying it.